hand him to the theater and the usher nods me in. They know me here. I descend down the staircase behind the movie screen that only select people know about. The door at the bottom opens and I walk in. The sound of movie spoilers fill the air. The barkeep has my drink ready and motions me to the back. The rest of the crew are here already. This is my type of place and these are my type of people. Join me as we discuss the inner secrets of cinema. Have a seat in the spoiler room. And yes, welcome, my friends. We have traveled to a galaxy far, far away once more. And the spoiler room, as you can imagine, we're covering Rise of Skywalker, the episode nine in uh, the Skywalker saga, the uh, apparently penultimate uh, episode, the the Uber episode that's going to just tie up the Skywalker saga and we'll never hear about it again. Yeah, right. But <laughs> I decided tonight on a whim to do this episode because I am a huge Star Wars fan and I managed to find two crew members who are very, uh, very accommodating and decided to join me tonight in the discussion. So first off, we are going to welcome back to the spoiler room once again, the diva of the spoiler room herself, the very talented Dawn. Hello, Dawn. How are you? I am just so happy to be here with you guys. Well, we are happy to have you back in the spoiler room, uh, especially to talk some Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> next to <laughs> Dawn, we have with us returning to the spoiler room once again, another talented individual here with us tonight. It is the lovely Mr. Andrew Shearer. Hello, Andrew. How are you, sir? Hey, man. It's an honor to be here with the two of you. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Thank you <laughs> for having me. So well, super stoked. Well, I'm uh, glad you agreed to come on the show to talk about the, the rise of Skywalker. So are we going to flip to see or do rock, paper, scissors to see who does the synopsis of episode nine? Or uh, who, who wants to take a stab at it? Andrew, do you want to take a stab at it? I mean, who did it last time it was me, you and Don? Um, I don't remember offhand because it's been a little while since it was all three of us. Um, okay. But I, uh, I could do it unless Don, you want to take a pot shot at it. I, I, I think I'll pass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I tend to meander. Okay. Well, I don't mind your meandering at all. Your your uh, recant of uh, Cutthroat Island was great. Okay. It... <laughs> I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Uh, all right, I guess I can, I can give it a whirl. Um, all right, so episode nine, Rise of Skywalker. We have <clears throat> Kylo Ren, who is on a rampage, looking for a device to attract down apparently the Emperor. Yes, it's no secret the Emperor's voice has been emanating through the galaxy on all frequencies and he doesn't want someone to share his power as he tries to take over said galaxy so he is on a rampage to find a device and he does rather quickly within a very quick montage at the beginning of this film to discover where the emperor is and we find out he's in a uh, on a planet the sith planet of uh Exumel? I think it's pronounced. Uh, I, I get pronunciations wrong all the time. I get my kids' names wrong. But in any case, he makes it there, and he ends up hooking up with the Emperor, and Emperor's like, dude, you don't want to kill me. I got plans. And he's like, okay, I got plans too, but let's, okay, let's hang together for a while, and we'll all follow our own plans, but we won't tell each other because we're Sith, but okay, let's do this. Meanwhile, Ray is like, shit, I got to become a Jedi because the whole galaxy is depending on me so we catch her like doing some training stuff and being a badass with a lightsaber and it turns out that leia is training her because leia we find out later actually did training with luke and as a jedi master which is badass as hell but ray and kylo have a link still that was carried over from the last jedi yes sorry fanboys they did not completely retcon 
Last Jedi. So we have Kylo and Rey who are connected across the Force, and that connection keeps to seem to be growing stronger as Kylo Ren prods her into joining him, and she's totally resistant to it, but she realizes there might be something to her origins that may draw her closer to the Sith. Meanwhile, the Resistance is really trying to drum up support because, guess what? The Last Jedi, when the signal went out, well, no one answered because everybody's too scared shitless of uh, the uh, First Order as well as the creepy Empire uh, Emperor voice that's emanating across the galaxy. Nonetheless, Finn and Poe are struggling to keep the Resistance alive with Leia and their rag tag group to get support and hopefully keep the first order from annihilating the galaxy but yes and folks this is the spoiler room but we come to find out the emperor's been hanging 10 for many years in seclusion building up the ultimate star destroyer fleet and we see how the resistance comes up with a last ditch effort to try to take out this fleet who are armed with planet killing guns uh, before the Emperor unleashes them and finally takes over the world. And, oh yeah, by the way, uh, Rey confronts the Emperor and Kylo, but as Luke said in The Last Jedi, this is not going to go how you think it will. <sighs> how was that? That was rad, Mark. <laughs> so, yes, Rise of Skywalker. Okay, so... As I mentioned, the opening of this film, Kylo on the Rampage, let's us uh, start with Dawn. Dawn, what did you think of this opening? We get the crawl, we get the we get the uh, title, and then we get a really like whiplash speed story. <laughs> how did you think about how this film opened? It, it opened about what I expected. Mm -hmm. I mean, um. They had a lot. They they were trying to do a lot in this film, um, and starting out, hitting the ground running was probably the best way they could have done it. Mm -hmm. And and I was actually surprised. I was actually surprised the film wasn't longer. Hey, I'm surprised it wasn't longer, or do like they've done with so many other Ultimate Saga trilogies, or even more so, do a two parter. Um, well, I'm so glad they didn't do a two-parter, but I'm I am a little surprised uh, that they wasn't like another 15 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the opening of this is just I mean they just take off and it really doesn't stop. Andrew, what'd you think about this opening of of the film? I was happy they start up with Kylo because I find him such an intriguing character, like way more than. Um, you know, than Darth Vader or whatever. Because you married Darth Vader, you didn't really find out much about him really until like the very end of, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then then the, they did like three three movies about his life or whatever. And that wasn't, you know, with Kylo, they didn't need that. You know, they basically got really in one movie. You know, that first movie, they really gave you everything pretty much, like almost. Mm -hmm. So to me, he's just a great, a great character. He's got so much to him. So I was like, and I was crazy seeing that Sith planet and shit. I was like, oh, God, I was scared. You know, it was scary. Like, remember those warnings they're talking about if the strobe effect might fuck with some people or whatever? It yep. was a lot of strobe in there. But I was like, I never thought I would see, like, where the Emperor's crib is. You know, like, oh, God. <laughs> it was just what you would think it would be. So it was strong. That opening was very strong. Uh, did you have anything to add, Don? I'm sorry. It sounded like you were going to say some more. I apologize if I cut you off. Mm -hmm. No, all. no, all right. that's... I'm glad you brought up Kylo because I'm going to say at the beginning I was kind of put off a little bit by his character. And there's so many people that compared to, uh, you know complained about his character. But if you look over this trilogy, outside of some of our other villains, um, I mean, Vader did have it in the original trilogy, but this one... He has the most drastic arc, but one of the things I found always f fascinating about Kylo is he's the guy who's been just so in denial that he's actually a good guy. <laughs> he's wanted to be bad so often that he he's like goes to the extreme, and especially with this opening where he's just annihilating people. Um, but 
there's always that little something underneath I've always felt with this character, and maybe it's just me, or maybe I'm making there weren't any signs, but for me, uh, I always liked the fact that underneath there you, you always felt even more so than some of our other characters we've gotten that are similar in the past that conflict in him, um, you know. Uh, to where he's like trying to prove himself that he's evil, but you know, down, do down deep, he he's actually not. I mean, am I off on that, Andrew, with Kylo? Or is, it, 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 has he through this all three films, and it's especially here, like he's lying to himself? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what's so intriguing because you really like, think about if you're a kid watching these, which let's not forget that children is, they're still the audience for what? these movies. What? What? I, I no. Think, I think so. No, I fully I fully agree. I'm just being <laughs> okay. it. I'm just saying, you know, and yeah. so so for for this for this guy to go like, okay, well the other movies, you know, it didn't work out for the bad guy. He started off he he could have been a good guy, but he went to the dark side and you know Luke wasn't going to go to no dark side or whatever. <laughs> then you find out his dad's, you know, went to dark side and you're like, fuck, it was over for him. He died. So that's the whole thing that connects all of Star Wars. You're like, Kylo, man, don't. But me, I saw him pretty early on mm -hmm. as like representing the fuck stick Star Wars fan. Because like <laughs> he spawned from the good people. He's, you know, this good thing created him, but he ended up a piece of shit. So you're like, I know you're not a complete piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I get you. He's, he is kind of reflecting. The fuck yeah, he reflects fan. to me like just the bit. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Like you know, the bitch Star Wars fan, the the, the ones that are just all, you know, they want to just like kill all women and black people the way that Kylo wants to destroy the good guy. <laughs> wow. They don't like Asians either. No, what if, you know? no. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, Don, how about you and Kylo over the trilogy, but especially in here, in the first chunk of this film? Uh, did you always get the impression that he really wasn't? going to be the bad you know he was lying to himself no matter what bad things he does he's regretting it <laughs> i i don't know so much about lying to himself but mm -hmm. definitely there is regret mm -hmm. i i think he's like the kid who really genuinely struggles with doing the right thing mm -hmm. he he Hmm. But he is committed to doing the wrong thing, mm -hmm. and he's afraid that if he starts actually trying to do the right thing, the consequences will be so much worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree. Well, that's what's interesting with this whole opening where he meets up with the Emperor, and then he decides, oh, I'm going to use the Emperor uh for my own things and we all know you know we're like dude it's the emperor you're not gonna pull any type of wool over his eyes or try your own plot but at the same time especially watching it the second time the first time i'm going to say this is a film that you really i think you've got to see more than once because the first time your brain whatever expectation either from the screaming on the internet or any type of hint reviews or trailers, whatever your expectation is, if it's not going to meet it or you're looking for things, you know, so many things come at you at once that uh, I don't think you can maybe, you know, take a pause and a step back and go, this is what's going on. So the second time I actually enjoyed this film even more because I knew all the big gotcha moments if you will the big you know the fan service type bits so i started looking at him like i think secretly kylo was happy not happy bad term but there was some relief to that regret that the emperor was still alive and we find out he's been pulling the strings pulled the strings um of the galaxy because <laughs> I think secretly Kylo, and maybe, again, I'm just reading too much into it, but was found his way out, found his opportunity, even though he wanted to kill the Emperor so he could be the ultimate badass in the galaxy, the good side of him is going, holy crap, the dude who is by far worse than I am is alive. I may have an out, <laughs> so to speak. 
um, because you know he can't be as badass as the emperor. So he goes, okay, no, he he rules. I'm I'm going to go now and be actually a good guy. Uh, if that makes any sort of sense, Don. You know what I'm kind of trying to say is that I, I know what you, I know what you're kind of trying to say. Um, also, I think he realized he had been fully played. Yeah. I mean, and there, so there was some. Um, he he realizes he full on realizes. I mean, he sees the the clone vats of Snoke. Emperor Snoke's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, the leader Snokes, and he knows that he was just played like a puppet. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because you got the emperor who's talking inside his head, and he does all the different voices, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, crap. And then, which leads you to realize, well, it, maybe it wasn't Snoke that was actually bridging Ray and, uh, Ray and Kylo. Maybe it was the emperor all along. That's actually bridging those two, um, you know, like from The Last Jedi, which, yes, that's where I'm saying, folks, they did not retcon The Last Jedi. People are like, oh, they tried to retcon as much as possible. I'm like, the gimmick, huh. the gimmick is I it's a bad term, but it, it's, you know, it kind of fits the gimmick that they came up with in The Last Jedi to where we saw what something we never saw before with the Jedi Force is two Jedis talking to each other and literally passing stuff and touching and interacting with each other through the force that gimmick plays a major role in this finale of this film so i don't understand where people are getting that the last jedi was so retconned um I, I and the what? thing is from to me those those parts make sense mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. those are just Looking at the entire um, franchise and the entire aside, uh, the entire history of the Jedi, aside from Yoda, yeah, and whatever race he is, because that's a whole other thing that's being explored <laughs> in a separate way. Yes, um, uh, the Palpatine lineage and the Skywalker lineage are the two most powerful Jedi ever in the entire history of mm -hmm. of Jedi and Sith. Right. So it would make sense that the two of them connected in some sort of soul bond would do something. You, we need to remember that not so much. Well, yeah, the Sith and the Jedi were forbidden to make those kind of attachments for a reason. Right. This the reason. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, because they play they refer to it a number of times as the dichotomy, you know, they're a dichotomy uh -huh. in the force. These two, which anybody else get a Highlander feel? <laughs> I'm well, sorry. That, that's kind of the Sith thing. Well, no, well, the Sith, there can be only one master and one student. Well, no, no but what I, sorry, uh, what I meant to say was there's not as many force people, at least in the J.J. Abrams uh, versions, for sure, because The Last Jedi hinted at it, and that kind of fell by the wayside a little um, so th no real masters outside of these two, Kylo and Ray. So they've got like the boosted power from all the other previous <laughs> Jedi and Sith all coursing through them. And it, I just got this kind of Highlander feel of going, that's why they're so powerful is because with not as many masters in the f universe, they've got more power to draw from. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm way off on that, but uh, speaking though, we 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 have uh, Kylo who's got regrets. He meets the Emperor who's looking scary as fuck. Um, I love what they did with the Emperor though. He did remind me a little bit of uh, uh was it uh, Overdog? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> oh good, uh, love me a Michael Ironside right now. <laughs> Oh, good. I don't feel so bad. Andrew, have you seen you've seen Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I get that reference. You get <laughs> where he's connected because there's a one shot where he's connected to the to the the arm, and I'm just like, holy shit, he's Overdog. <laughs> it's like he just needs the big claws, and uh, you know, there you go. But um, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. I, I, it was he was scary. They made you're right, Andrew, when you mentioned it. 
it's like, holy crap, the Sith are scary again. <laughs> they are. No, you don't want to half step when you go to the Sith planet. <laughs> the Sith planet was legitimately scary. Uh, and so cool. I was like, that's fucking awesome. I'm like, here's something we haven't seen before. You, you know? I, I mean, yeah, it's bringing back the Emperor, but they explain it away, and it's been brought up in the, well, what's now called the Legacy Stories a number of times how the Emperor could have survived through cloning and whatnot. I mean, Dark Empire, the great comic book series, is totally based off of that fact. Um... But just the opposite of Kylo, who's got regrets and who is trying to really, really be bad, but he's good inside, uh, so he's got those regrets. We have Rey, who is full-on determined to be Jedi, and she is confident that she is a Jedi and not doesn't even think for a moment. I never really got the impression for a moment until we get the one scene in the desert in this film that she could even possibly be bad. Uh, Andrew, what do you think with Ray? I mean, whereas we have Kylo who's con in conflict, Ray, for the longest time until that desert scene, you never feel any conflict with her, do you? No, man. And, and let me just tell you, that's what the stuff I'm really living for in these movies is Ray. I mean, I'm my Star Wars as a fan. You know how it goes, man. There's a piece of things for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's why there's parts of movies you're gonna like, parts you're not. You know, there's they they you know it's 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 massive. And so, um, for her to be, you remember how like when Luke just I guess it was Return of Jedi where he was all of a sudden a Billy badass. Remember what he showed yeah. up at Jabba's? He was like, can nobody fuck with me, Luke? <laughs> I was like, man, I'm so happy that she would get there. But the way they showed her be like that wasn't the way they would show Luke that way mm -hmm. because she's a woman, so she's a superior. And so it was like she – remember she did that flip or whatever? Yeah. That was in the trailers, which that was badass, and it told you what you need to know. But the lead into it was great because like what you said, she didn't even think twice about doing that shit. No. <laughs> and, and that made me so happy, not just because that's a great thing to do with that character now that we've had her three movies – but also girls in the audience, you mm -hmm. know, getting to see that, like, you know, they're coming up with that character. They, you know, that's, that is a rad thing for them to see. And, and I'm going to say it and I, I apologize to you both that I might be jumping back, but for me out of the three films, the last Jedi for me was still my favorite. Um, and I know that's blasphemous in the fandom, but whatever, but you get that in the last Jedi and it carries over to this film to where, she just dove right into the test on the island in Last Jedi without a thought because she at no point thought she could be corrupted or, you know, turned to the dark side. She was 100% confident that there was no way, you know, other than to be a Jedi, that's what she wanted to be. And so that's why she had that confidence to just dive in and get her answers because she's like, you're not going to corrupt me. And halfway through this film, until we get to this uh, desert where we have that uh, festival and, and the First Order tracks her down because uh, they're carrying on a mission that Luke was looking for, which was uh, this way seeker device, this way seeker device for the Sith that could lead you to the planet. And there were only two made. Of course, Kylo had one, and she was looking for the other. So she carried on Luke's mission through his notes of, of looking for it. So she's in the desert, and she confronts Kylo. We saw that in the trailer, the badass scene where she flips and cuts his friggin' TIE fighter. Uh, but she's holding down this transport that supposedly has Chewie on it, and Kylo fights her by him holding it. And they're going back and forth, and she gets all like juiced and all of a sudden palpatine electricity shoots from her hand and explodes the transport making you think maybe chewy blew up um but you know everybody knew it and she knew it at the same time like oh shit that's a dark force power <laughs> they, were, they were assholes for making me think chewy was dead <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like the movie, but that, that was an asshole mood. <laughs> it, it was a bit of an asshole mood because you're like, what, Chewie went out like that? Really? Mm. Seriously? Nah, I mean, so people probably went, ah, he ain't dead. 
but they've been killing everybody, so I was like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah, you you never know because they've been killing anybody. But you know, it was interesting. It, it was kind of a really cool reveal because at the same time, because you had all these fan theories and that out there um, about her being a clone of Palpatine, to which I don't know if the writing of making her a Palpatine was because of that to try to appease some fans. Uh, but it still was interesting to for her to realize at the same time as the audience, um, you know. And then she finally loses a little bit more of her. Oh crap! I I could actually have a dark side. Well, that's the only thing that could trip her up at this point. Yeah, that's the only thing. Because you think about the shit that got to her in the Last Jedi was the stuff that Kylo was saying. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's yeah. her her one thing you know get in her head but you know at this point the only thing that could get in her head was something like that you know nothing else i don't think could have done it no i don't think anything really could have done it either um and you know the whole thing with her being palpatine and we'll cover the last act in here because everything's uh will, will be leading up to it but um i'm not sure though how i feel about her being palpatine it, like I said, it, it felt like kind of fan service. I felt like she didn't have to be Palpatine in order to have that happen. Don, what what do you think of of you know the reveal with her being Palpatine? Did they really need to, or couldn't they just left her come from, you know, from no one basically, uh, for lack of a better term, from from no one, and still do everything you wanted to in this film? <sighs> It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. um, they had they had her come from no one. Um, it would have been similar to. It would have been too similar to Anakin Skywalker, mm -hmm. just being born of the Force. Right. Um, being Palpatine. Um, being of the, the Palpatine lineage is closer to Luke's story mm -hmm. and how not knowing his parents and then finding out he's Vader's daughter or son <laughs> and the conflict there. Hey, uh, it's closer but... to that. And I mm -hmm. think Ray's story was always closer to Luke's story. Right. So I think they were struggling on how to make her related to Palpatine. So I uh, do, I, I'm not a fan of how they did it simply mm. because math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause her parents couldn't have been any older than um, Luke and Leia. Right, and we're looking at it, and we're looking at a timeline that's supposedly that's thirty years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, and third and Return of the of the Jedi was how long past, uh, uh, Clone Wars and right, a Revenge of the Sith where Palpatine was already old and physically corrupted. Right. Well. There has been talk that, uh, and I guess J.J. Abrams left it open specifically so they could explore it, of course, in novels and comics and shit, um, yeah. how the Emperor came back. But there have been people th talking about, uh, did the Emperor make not so much granddaughter as in, you know, through natural re ways, but through unnatural ways, like made her. You know, or made because there was talk about him possibly. Did he make Anakin? Though Lucasfilm shot that down pretty damn quick. Um, you know, did he? You know, he says granddaughter, but is she actually? You know, or did he use his blood to create her? Who knows? Um, you know. Well, no, because the memories of of her parents are there. Oh, that's so, true. That's true. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's always people who are attracted power yes. always regardless yeah. of the source of that power as my wonderful husband pointed out there's a certain person in power that still probably can get any 
um, <laughs> attention he wants from the right source because there's always people attracted to power, no matter how power. stupid that power is. Yeah. yeah. And if you ever heard the Emperor's Band, I mean, they were good. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's important. Everybody loves a good band. Everybody loves a good band. You know, there's always groupies. Uh, always. <laughs> there's Sith groupies, too, so, I'm sure. So Yeah, I just, it, it's taking me entire lo- too long to process it, but I I appreciate that they did... They started with making Ray following Ray's story similar to following Luke's story, mm-hmm. and then they finished with it too. I mean, yeah. However, however, her parents came to be. Mm-hmm. It still followed through Luke's. It, it still followed a path of Luke's story. Right, which explains the end. Which again. Uh, we'll get to. I don't want to make it too long tonight, but there there's some things to 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 uh, dissect here. But yeah, the you know the way they reveal her and and her being a Palpatine. I mean, Andrew, how'd you feel about that with her being a Palpatine? It was great, man. Yeah, I mean, everything Don said, I totally agree with, man. Mm-hmm. But I was just that was that seemed like to me just poetry, you know, mm-hmm. um, because. You know, you you got like we talk about like bad people from coming from good things, right? Mm-hmm. You know, because that mm-hmm. that was oh, what a motherfucker to have Leia and Han son end up being the biggest asshole in the galaxy. <laughs> like that's just right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, what a story idea, right? And so for her, the big hero, for her for her to be um descendant of the you know the most evil shit ever made, mm-hmm. you're like, oh man. But again, man, I keep coming back to it. I love what Don say about how connecting it to Luke's story because that's smart. You you need these movies to all, you know, you don't want to get so invested in them for no little payoffs like that. You know, that's right. that's just how you do it. But to me, she was just so powerful. To me, that's the only type of information you could get that would knock her down enough peg for you to feel as an audience member like, oh, God, oh, man, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that really added drama to me for them to mm-hmm. make it like that, you know. Yeah, it made it for drama for me, and I, I liked the reveal of it uh, in that desert scene. Because, again, you think, one, she chew- killed Chewie, and two, it's like, holy crap, she actually is a bad guy, possible. Or it has the yeah. potential to be a bad guy, which screws with her brain, with, with her completely, and, you know, makes her question pretty much everything suddenly. You know, now, think about it, man. If you sat down and looked at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like all back to back, seeing that lightning come out of her hand would be like, oh shit. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like that. I mean, I these things have been in my DNA. So the minute that lightning shot out, it's like, oh mm-hmm. damn, shit, no. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's the, to me, it's the only thing they could have done. You know, and my only concern, and uh, as I said, folks, the spoiler room, uh, the my only concern with her. Uh, was the fact of making her actually turn. I would not have liked that. Um, and I, I like how they handled that whole thing in the, in the conclusion. Because um, I was concerned. You know, after the scene, the trailer, and you get to see her, um, which we all knew uh, was actually a, a, a test, a, a Jedi test, if you will, of her mm-hmm. in the Seth, Sith cloak with the badass lightsaber, uh, the dual lightsaber was like no nah, they they the way they build this character up I thought I was very much happy they did not make her turn evil because I'm like that would have been cheap <laughs> uh, they wouldn't have done man it was just the same thing as um like you know how Don was saying connecting it to Luke's story remember when he thought he was fighting Darth Vader and, and it turned out he saw his face in the mask when he yep. killed Vader mm-hmm. that's that same type of moment for me yeah anyway. yep yes exactly yeah and uh, I agree, it, it was, and I was happy with that, you know, but it, when I first saw the lightning bolt, I was just very concerned. Um, I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, crap, don't go this way. I love Ray. I love this character. And They wouldn't do that. Man. But they wouldn't do that. Um, you know, so you get the desert seed, and, and they end up, uh, they take this opportunity to actually build... And we do have a character that gets shortchanged. I'm sure, Andrew, you've noticed it. Um, yeah. Finn, uh, unfortunately, 
and and also Rose, <laughs> um, but definitely Finn for sure, who is traveling with Poe this whole time. And we explore Poe's character a little more, and we find out he was a spice smuggler, and they end up going to a planet to try to, uh, well, to backtrack, they find this blade, which is really cool, a Sith blade, and the droid C three PO can read it, but he can't translate it. So they decide to go to this planet that Poe knows about, and we find out he has kind of a shady past uh, to try to get uh, 3PO hacked so they can actually get this information. Um, what did you think of this whole arc, Andrew, with, with Poe and, and this whole sequence with getting the information out of C-3PO? I liked it, man. I liked it better than... Yeah, I liked it better than... Um... In Last Jedi, where they went to the casino, yeah. you know, and all of that stuff. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'll say this now. Every Star Wars movie has stuff in it that I'm like, eh, it doesn't really work for me. However, Last Jedi, after watching all of them in preparation for, for this, I'm mm-hmm. saying all of them, like, the you know, the right. first three yeah. and the last three. Um, to me, Last Jedi is, is my favorite now, Star Wars movie. Last Jedi is my favorite. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, it, it's, it was so much stronger of a B story. Than um, than the uh the the stuff they were trying to do with uh, with um with Rose, Finn and, yeah. and Rose, they really like they could have come up with something better for them to do in in that Last Jedi. So it was superior to that. Also, man, um, that that friend of his, right, that Carrie Russell. Yeah, man, that was a great character, wasn't it? I, I like that that's... character. I loved that character. Uh, yeah, Carrie Russell playing Zori Bliss. Um, yeah, so what better compared than to the code <laughs> master codebreaker guy? Yes, yeah, is definitely better than the master codebreaker guy. Um, and I loved her and the relationship they had with her and Poe. And we actually get a few beats with these two together, and and we get to at least get a little more introduction with her and, and get to spend some more time with her than many of the other new characters we get in this film. Um, which was nice. Yeah, and I thought Zori Bliss was awesome. I'm like, she's she's badass. <laughs> you know, it's another badass. I mean, you get that scene, too, where they're uh, they're on the planet, and uh, Poe is looking for Zori, uh, basically the, the hacker, and they cross paths with Zori, and, like, uh, Ray, like, just knocks the shit out of her entire crew, and then her and Ray are, you know, they draw each, their weapons at the same time, and it's like, Suddenly, they both uh, kind of have respect for each other. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also, let's not mince words. It shows that these two are more badass than any of the guys around them. <laughs> I mean, am I wrong, Dodd? <laughs> no, but it, it did. It reminded me of, in a lot of, especially the older movies, mm-hmm. you see guys fist fighting, and then at the end of the fist fight, they're best buds. Right. It reminded <laughs> me of that. Yeah, it it felt quite like that, uh, you know. And she said that line for what it's worth, you know. <laughs> was it? I I really I like her or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. I like that, and it leads to because on this dagger, as I mentioned, C three PO was able to translate it, but he couldn't actually because mechanically, <laughs> we find out that all the droids are forbidden. Like physically, like they cannot go against their programming and translate Sith. That's how scary Sith are, and that's what precautions they put in. So C-3PO, uh, they got to get hacked, but it's going to cause him to get a mind wipe. And I'm going to say right now, you guys, you both are Star Wars fans. I've grown up with this since two and a half years old. I'm going to say right now, it is so awesome they gave C-3PO this scene. Because this is like the best moment of C-3PO I've gotten out of all nine films. Am I wrong on that, Dawn? (laughs) No, you're absolutely right. Um, it It is definitely... Especially because we find out... Um that he's already gotten his mind wiped once at right. least once right so now that we're to this point it's it's actually so fitting that he actually has a moment to process and decide for himself that he's making this sacrifice 
right? It's pretty cool. A- Anthony Daniels gets a moment out of the. It took nine films, but Andrew, what would you think of it? Did you think that? It, am I off on saying this is probably? He's not com- comedic uh, sidekick or whatever. He gets his moment for yeah, this. No, scene. I was. I thought that while I was watching it. Yeah. I'm like, hey, look at this, man. <laughs> like, I, I really like that part of the story. I'm like, he's getting, he's got, he's important, you know? Like, he's really got a something. I, I thought it was a very um, creative way to do it, you know? They mm-hmm. didn't feel like forced or whatever. Forced. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I mean, it, I, while I was watching it, I thought the same as you. It, it, was, it was Star Wars universe feasible. It, mm-hmm. it was the natural progression. You can buy into the idea that the Republic across the galaxy has put in this uh, uh, this directive that they cannot translate Sith because nobody wants them seeking them out at all. And we know how droids can be, so they mechanically restrict them. Um, you know, you buy into that, but he can translate it. So you buy into that and giving him that moment to where he gets the choice... And it also is fitting because we all know R2 has been throughout the entire saga. And if you look at it, we've pretty much watched this entire series through his eye. Um, I don't think he's ever been memory wiped. <laughs> no. I don't think R2, which is why they dropped the line about him, uh, the astromech backing it up. Because now we it explains it, what you mentioned, Andrew. And, and Don Bolt, you mentioned about, you know, we, we he's had his memory wiped in the past, and now it explains why he comes back to who he is, is because R2 is just, you know, he's his uh, portable backup. Uh, <laughs> he's, his, he's his quick drive, and R2, you know, he's got all the answers, but no one can really understand him. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I love this moment uh, where they give C-3PO... A serious moment. He's not being the butt of jokes. He's not being what they did to him in the prequels. God, oh, God bless Anthony Daniels for going along with it. I feel so bad for him in the prequels because C3PO was such uh, um, uh, just a joke, you know, just the, the punchline. And we also get the hacker who's everybody's favorite little character. Uh, <laughs> Um, I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, the little guy, though. Dio. Huh? His no. name is Dio. Oh, that's the robot. Oh, no, you're, talking about, you're talking about the little alien. The guy? little alien guy. God, I forgot his name offhand. I'm I'm a horrible host. I apologize, folks. But well, guy, um, you're not going to remember every little CG or puppet critter and shit. I mean, that's not possible. Well, and that's the thing. He was a puppet too. That was so awesome. He but, was. Uh, he was so cool, and it's funny because when he shows up later during the final battle, like the audience I was with, ah, oh, Babu Frick, that's his name. Babu, yeah. Oh, she did the voice. That's awesome. Oh, well, that just makes the character so much better. <laughs> Shirley Henderson. I like Shirley Henderson. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Babu Frick is like I think everybody's little side uh, favorite side character because when he showed up at the final battle. Like, the audience I was with, they all cheered. <laughs> it's like for this little side character. It was awesome. Uh, and I think it helps that he was a puppet, because if he was CGI, I don't think people would have maybe liked him as much. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, Babu Frick. And But, yeah, this moment with uh, 3PO and getting the translation, I thought, was just a great moment to give him for what is supposedly the final Skywalker saga story. Um, for being comedic for so long, um, yeah, it, I, it's one of my favorite moments <laughs> in this film, actually. Um, uh, you know, but so they they get the translation and and they realize, oh hey, uh, we know where it is, and guess where we head to, Andrew? Where do we end up going to to find the Wayfarer? I mean, did they go to that system? Planet, or did they no, go to Endor? Endor. I don't remember. It was Endor. Well, oh, the, yeah, okay. yeah, the moon. Yeah, they went to the. Yeah, because then I was like, oh shit, it's going to be some Ewoks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we don't get Ewoks. Or there better be some Ewoks. We, we don't get Ewoks, Andrew, do we? Uh, we get uh, a, a tribe of individuals. Uh, it, it, call them a tribe, a group of individuals. 
uh, who ride horses and have been living on Endor and uh, scavenging. And yeah, we get some new characters. What would you think of this new crew that we're introduced to, Andrew? Man, they made me happy, man, because you start thinking about the end of a trilogy. Hey, you start thinking about Return of the Jedi, man, and, and the way that everything, like, let's get away from space. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we had enough space. Let's yeah. let's go to let's let's see some earth. Let's see some trees. Let's see some grass. I like all of them, man. I'm glad this is where Lando showed up. I'm glad this is where the only black woman that lives through a Star Wars movie showed up. <laughs> I'm glad that you know. I was just really happy about all of it. It was really cool. And um, actually, to be honest, um, what was her name? Uh, Naomi Aki's character. Uh, she she and uh, her Jana? and Finn end up. Jonna. You, they, they were so great, their little story, too, because they had both very similar backgrounds, right? I'm like, man, I would love to see a movie just about that experience. You know what I'm saying? And just like I would love to see a movie about just Rose and her sister. Yeah. You know? Uh, but but as it was, for being, let's face it, a white people's franchise, <laughs> in terms of characters, yeah. it's led by white characters. Um, I thought it was a great way to put them in there. I mean, this... This is probably my favorite section of the movie, honestly. Well, yeah, because they're on Endor and they run across uh, Jana, and because uh, there's a, a time there's a time limit uh, for them to find this, the Poe and Finn and Ray and that to find this Wayfarer to find the Sith site because the Emperor has this mega fleet of Star Destroyers and he's about to unleash them onto the galaxy, so that's why they're kind of in a hurry. And, yeah, they run across this group of individuals led by Jana. Not only that, Jana's group is rather diverse for your Star Wars group. Um, <laughs> if you've noticed uh, many of the people in the background, which was great to see uh, some representation there. But, yeah, I liked her and uh, what they did with her and Finn. And I think they kind of did that to try to curb away the fan folks of saying, oh, Finn and Ray need to be romantic because th- over the first two films that's what people were kind of leading towards they're like oh they got to be you know uh th- th- they're they were hoping for i should say uh for those two um and it's like they have the genre character to i think maybe curb that theory don what do you think on that is that maybe that's why they introduced this character or is it maybe give finn a- at least another character to relate to uh since like i said uh he his story always feels kind of like on the back burner, unfortunately. Very much so. Um, I don't know if it was... In t- I, I, I didn't get the impression that it was intentional to pull him away from any sort of potential romantic whatever with Ray. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely think it was so that he realized it was the whole they're not alone thing right um other uh other people had left the ranks of the first order mm-hmm. and uh and had left being a stormtrooper and they just hadn't been introduced as characters yet and i think i i very much think that it was important to the story to and to Finn's character to have him make a connection like that thing. Oh, I'm not the only person that did that. That's so cool. I'm glad that. And then of course, talking more about being force connected. Yeah. That's what's interesting with the Finn character that it almost makes you feel like, well, we could do another movie, you know, because we, they've hinted at it throughout this trilogy that the, uh, He's force sensitive, at least. Yes, and and there's a lot of people who are. They just, I don't think they want. I don't know where they're going with the Jedi thing, because mm-hmm. Ray finally brought balance to the force. <laughs> yeah, she did. Uh, but he's still sensitive to her. And do we ever? We don't ever get the what he was going to say to her as they were sinking into the sand, do we? We really don't. It's mentioned a couple of times, but we never get it. And I'm like, God dang, leave leave it opening, sure. Uh, which I wouldn't mind a Finn movie, personally. 
uh, <laughs> at all. Uh, but yeah, it, it was great. Just go watch Attack the Block, I guess. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Me uh, too. too. So yeah, uh, <laughs> it it leads us though. We get another confrontation between Ray and Kylo. Um, because she's on the wreckage of the Star Destroyer, which, I mean, the Death Star, which I thought was an interesting way, because this is the finale, to touch on your nostalgia bug, to give a little bit of a fan service to where we visit the throne room from Jedi, which is totally demolished now, and John Williams brings in even the score from Jedi, like like the music cue, which I kind of liked. I liked that whole setup. And then we get this badass battle between Kylo and Rey, um, and it's, it's the turning point for both these characters. And Andrew, what'd you think about this battle between Kylo and Ray? It's epic, man. They weren't trying to copy any of the other con, you know, big battles from the other movies, man. It, it had a whole other kind of dramatic weight to it because mm-hmm. I feel the characters have better writing for them. And so, um, you know, despite all of the, um, you know, the effects or whatever, didn't matter it was it had real like the real proper dramatic weight to it 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 did have dramatic weight it had a little better context uh don did you like this battle as well between kylo and and ray on on the wreckage of the star destroyer or death star god i keep saying that i did that when i was a kid too i fucking fail i'm sorry uh oh that's it's a lot to remember g i mean uh, yeah I, I did like it. I, I like it because I don't think I don't think either of them, as hard as they were battling, I don't think either of them really wanted to hurt each other. Right. Yeah. And it... then when Ray finally got angry enough and did hurt him, uh, you know, run him through. Right. She um and then Leia, of course, mystically steps in. She, I think that was her moment when she realized that she needed to make a change if she was not truly going to turn dark, which is why then she mm-hmm. then force healed. I love the fact and they brought in force healing. I know you, many me people. too. Many people maybe didn't, but I love the fact they brought in Force Healing. I'm like, oh. Dude, how could you not like that, man? Yeah. That's what heroes do. Right. You know, that my big my big problem, man, with, with movies all the time with heroes about you, you are, when you kill the bad guy, you're a murderer, though. You yeah. know? So that was ultimate, what she said, man. Okay, which, I, I, oh, go ahead, Don. I like the fact, too, that she acknowledges that she gave him part of her life. Like she shortened her life, mm-hmm. her natural life by healing him because number one, that set up for what happens later. And number yeah. two, it set up. It, it kind of explains why it wasn't ever taught previously with it's, the other Jedi. It's not done willy nilly because it does drain you doing that. I, you know, I'm not sure if it would completely kill you, but it is draining on the Jedi. The impression I got in this film, the Force healing. Um, I'm not sure if it, it it shortens your lifespan, but um, it definitely has an impact. You're absolutely right, and that's why people just don't go around Force healing everybody and becoming like the Second Coming. Because uh, <laughs> you're right, there is a, there is some stake in the game, some skin in the game, uh, with it. Uh, but maybe one of you can explain to me because this was one of the parts I thought was a little confusing, and it makes me wonder how this would have played out had it not been, unfortunately, the passing of Carrie Fisher. Um, how they would actually handle this? Did she? pause because kylo had ray dead to rights and she steps in mystically and and calls him to which he wasn't used to he didn't realize oh crap mom can call me um and he pauses and ray kills him does she pause him so ray has the opportunity or did she just pause him to try to stop him 
and Ray took the opportunity on her own to just kill him? Or did Leia know that was going to happen? Because this is the part that was a little grave for me for even the second viewing. I'm like, did she do that so Ray could, you know, get the advantage? Or did she just do it to stop Kylo, not so much have expect Ray to actually stab him? You know what I'm I'm trying to ask? Because the way it plays out, it's a little gray on whether or not she stopped Kylo so she so Ray could get the <laughs> shot or what. Well, I uh, thought that was the whole point, man. Mm-hmm. Like it could be either one. That's part of why you know they don't they don't want to spell that out for you, so you have something to chew on. You know, mm-hmm. like that's intriguing. Uh, it's one thing that I you know because Leia kind of knew, you know, he was beyond whatever. Right. You know, like she was kind of saying he's probably gonna have to. So I'm going to have to kill myself. I'm sorry. You know, there was, she kind of had a moment. Am I remembering this right? Where she sort of resigned to that. Mm -hmm. Uh So you could say either one really, I think, but I, I would like to think that she just stops him and Ray just took the shot because she's a badass. You know, she's going (laughs) off of impulse, you know, that thing the Jedi always have to keep under control, you know, Mm -hmm. is there that, 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 um, that tendency to just (sighs) to strike out like, you know, yeah, that that could be Don, What about you? Do you think it's it, they do that on purpose to leave it kind of open to interpretation? I, I agree with Andrew. They left it. They left it ambiguous. Uh-huh. Um, and regarding um, what they would have done had Carrie Fisher not died, um, I had listened to an interview done with her. Mm-hmm. I was uh, with her daughter, and the original story was supposed to be completely different. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the original last this this last movie was supposed to be completely different. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be Carrie Fisher, uh, Leia Solo, mm-hmm. as the last Skywalker. Uh, being a badass. Yes. Maybe if they hadn't have made her lose all that weight, she would have lived. What do y'all think? Is that true? <laughs> like, didn't that put a strain on her like it, constitution? It, it might have. Days? I know she had some I, other. I, I definitely think there. I think there was damage done to internal organs. Yeah. Um, and body chemistry through years of of substance abuse and yeah. the natural. You're when you're on as many um, mood stabilizers and uh, uh, various medications that she needed. It it does things to your body. It just does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true, and and it is unfortunate, but it's interesting to see Ray did it because what I liked about it though was the fact she gave into her rage, her impulse, took the shot because as Andrew, like you said, she's a badass. Ray Ray's a badass. I love Ray uh-huh. so much. I just love her. And the minute she took the shot, she had that connection with her master, and she realized Leia's dead. She's like, oh shit! And then she's looking at her lightsaber, like, oh shit! Uh, <laughs> I I just did that. Um, and that's why she heals Kylo and that uh, for as much bitching and complaining people have done with the Forkus Awakens and even the last Jedi you get that exploration more I have loved the relationship between Kylo and Rey and outside of one decision they made in this entire film at the end I've loved what they've done with these two characters (laughs) Uh, which you guys can probably imagine which one I'm talking about um, because after this event, she, uh, she realizes who she is. So she's going to go and pull a Luke and like, go on the island. And she ruins, uh, after she stole Kylo's, uh, ship, she, she goes on the island and, um, that Luke went on and then we get force Luke. And this was the only section uh, that made me kind of sigh because it felt like this was specifically some of this was deliberately not all of it put in there because of the rage of the internet. Uh, Andrew, what do you think? Do you, do you think because she throws the she's about to throw the lightsaber into the fire and just totally give up the Jedi life, and we have Ghost Luke catching the lightsaber and says the lightsaber deserves more respect. This is like one of the only moments where I was just like, oh man. <laughs> uh, I mean, in a way, man, and fuck people that don't like Last Jedi. However. Um, I do think that bringing Luke back was cool mm-hmm. as Force Ghost. Oh yeah, because that that makes you think about all the times that people had a had a set the Force Ghost had to come talk to Luke. 
yeah. you know mm-hmm. so to me that was a good echo of that um and plus like man Brian Luke back is just I didn't want to see the last <laughs> you know the the last movie that's called Skywalker and not have Luke in it that would have oh, that yeah. would have made me mad you know yeah. so to a degree I don't really care what they how they brought him back so long mm-hmm. as he's there you know and seeing Luke be a force ghost is like you know destiny or whatever but as far as like you know what he says or what he does I don't, I don't feel like it was necessarily a cop out I mean I can't think of what I would rather have had him do right. you know it just seemed like a Star Wars type of moment to me, you know. It, it was true. Uh, Don, what about you? <laughs> I thought it was. I, I thought it was. It wasn't as cheesy a Star Wars moment as if Lucas would have written it, yeah. but it was definitely there because it was a Lucas thing. Right. And there's a, there's several things that were in this movie that were a much better than how Lucas would have done it, but they were in there for Lucas because mm-hmm. that's how he would have written it. <laughs> like, like what else besides, uh, besides this? Cause that line, it's almost like deliberately like quit winking at the audience for this, please. Well, it, it just, all of the, we mentioned how Anthony Daniels got his three PO serious, right? The moment, the shining star of the moment the entire sequence after that with the cheese ball stuff that 3PO does. Oh yeah. And that bef- all and before that and too. Before. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I no, I'm just out. thinking uh it, 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 when they're on that one planet and 3PO's running and he's got the robe on and his arms are in the air and he's just kind of doing that silly little run i looked at sheldon and i said oh my god i run like that too sometimes (laughs) 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 i yeah yeah. (laughs) but yeah there's a there's a few moments and then once we get to the end there is definitely a moment uh there's definitely a sequence where um You expected the Lucas moment. Yeah. The, the the you expected the Lucas situation, and you didn't get it, mm-hmm. and it made everything so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so for me too. I mean, this was the only section. It was great to see Luke as a force ghost. It was natural. I was hoping they would do it. Some of the things that happened there, I'm like, it's it. It's bad because between uh, The Last Jedi and here, as much as I tried to avoid things on my news group and that, I ended up running across discussions. And there were like a few points in this sequence with Ray on the island and Luke going, you, you got to basically giving him, giving her the Obi-Wan speech, which is you've got to confront your fears. You've got to go face Palpatine, whereas Obi-Wan said, you got to go fight Vader, uh, you know. So it is that similar moment, it mirrors it, but there's just a number of moments. You know, there's that one as well as Luke raising his X-Wing, which was awesome. I loved that sequence, but I couldn't help, at least the first time I watched it, second time I was, could separate myself a little more. But I unfortunately, because I, I this series has been with me so long and I'm guilty of it, I know I'm getting there, don't worry, uh is that I saw a number of things where people complained, why didn't Luke raise the X-Wing out of the water at one point in Last Jedi? And so now he raises the X-Wing out of the water in the Skywalker and and mimicking, you know. And I wish that I hadn't read that on the internet, because if I hadn't, and the second time around I found it better, it mirrors, and it's an inside joke, because he couldn't, when he was young, raise the X-Wing out of the water. And now yep. he's he's doing it. So the second time around, in all honesty, since I was able to to quiet those voices and things that I read, I appreciated that scene a lot more. But it it was definitely a bit of fan service. But it was it was cool fan service. Um. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I get you. If when he was alive, he was even even as older Luke in, in Last Jedi, he was still too conflicted mm-hmm. and had to, he, he was still too conflicted and he still didn't believe. Right. He he couldn't believe that he'd be a, a master. And like you said, that scene was yeah. awesome. And see, he even held his hand the same way as Yoda. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I 
which shows you how much of a Star Wars geek I am, because he's like standing just like Yoda and raising it just like Yoda. And she puts his helmet on even. Andrew, what do you think of that? <laughs> Loved it, man. I love all of that stuff, dude. Yeah. I mean, I don't sit there and go like, oh, that's fan service. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, you're like, it's called payoff. Mm -hmm. You know, to be as called payoff, these it's not like this is just one th or two movies. It's a lot of ass movies. Right. And they're also more than movies. They're culture. Mm -hmm. They're mythology. So you let that hand mean something, mm -hmm. you know? That's all that is, is, is um, what, what do you call it? Continuity. Right. That's all that is. It is. And like I said, I feel bad because the first time I watched it, I was trying to curb some of those things. But when those scenes popped up, it was like I just couldn't help but feel a little bit like that was there on purpose. And so when I wanted to see it the second time, knowing kind of what to expect, I paid attention, you know, and and f focused a little more uh and i appreciated that a whole lot more but at the same time there were still a few moments where it's just like ah they put those in there because of uh of the fans um but you know we find ray going to the sith and she maps her course through the because we find out it's it's hard as hell to get to uh the sith planet go figure um and so she maps the way and the resistance mounts a, a plan to go take out these because of the radio communication, which the whole massive fleet relies on, which, again, am, am I getting the feeling, Don, of the port on the Death Star <laughs> weakness <laughs> with the, only, the whole thing controlling this entire massive planet-killing fleet is one radar tower? Um... Yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly uh, appears that way. Mm -hmm. But as um, uh, but I don't think it necessarily is. I mm -hmm. think they um, I think they just uh, oops. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was just coincidental. Yeah, because I think by that point, by the time they figured out, uh, by the time they were actually able to have enough ships to go in and start attacking the uh, planet killers, mm -hmm. they um, just had enough ships to right. destroy them all. It, I don't think it was specific to the weapon. Mm -hmm. Because they I just think they got all that badass shit. They think they don't even need to do that, you know? That's true. Yeah. Well, it's always played. I mean, it's always played the, the weakness of the Empire is its arrogance. Uh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's overconfidence. I mean, Luke said it in Jedi, and it has always carried through is the overconfidence of the Emperor even. This is his downfall here in this this final third act. Um, the, the, the arrogance and the overconfidence of the Emperor is his weakness. And your faith in your friends is yours. Um, but, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the res resistance doesn't have much left, but they decide to go take on Mega Fleet, and they come up with this idea to take out this communication tower, which would keep them from leaving the Sith planet. So the ragtag group, and they're led, and part of their plan, though, is to try to drum up some support. And who do they get? We get Lando back, Billy D. Williams, who looked a lot better than when I saw him at the convention. Um, he gets to fly the Falcon again with Chewie. And I, I was worried when I saw the trailer how they worked him in, but I liked how they worked Lando into the story, uh, giving him just enough scenes, because I know Billy D. Williams has had health issues and such. So, and, and, uh, But it was great to see him in here and how they worked him into the story. Uh, Don, did you like how they worked Lando into this? I did, and I'm glad they did not try to feature him as a prominent character mm -hmm. because that would have really complicated things yeah, unnecessarily. It, it, it could have tired him out because he, I know the real actor, I mean, he's had some issues in that. So the fact he was able to come back at all was really cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then he wasn't the only surprise 
returning <laughs> cast member. We only get a brief look of him, but no, he wasn't the only one, uh, which was awesome. I, I had heard rumblings they were going to put Wedge in here, and he showed up just for one, like, three seconds, and it was, like, awesome. And, like, the whole audience I was watching, they popped for that. It was like the oh, ent- yeah. entire audience cheered. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew, did you like how they worked Lando into this? Yeah, man, and he... For being, what's he, like 80 or whatever? Yeah. I mean, he's smooth as hell. It's like he walked right out of one of them Colt 45. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. He was great, man. If I was him, I'd be like, they did me right, you know? They did his character so right with it because they first meet him on the desert planet. You find out, hey, Luke was working with him, which is an awesome thing to find out. Luke was actually working with him to track down the Sith planet. Um, and that's where the trail went cold. And then they he comes back later and gets gets into the fight and it was just cool that he was helped to to assemble the largest not fleet in the galaxy <laughs> oh yeah. with this climactic battle which this this whole third act was just so payoff i loved how this all played out except for one thing um and i i loved how this ray going to confront the emperor we're finding out actually we get some explanation, too, in here of why the Emperor truly wanted Luke to strike him down. And why was that, Andrew? Why did he actually want Luke to strike him down? It wasn't so that Luke could take over the Empire, but it was... What? I don't remember. Oh, it was <laughs> to jump into his body. Oh, was it? Man, I started to fall asleep a little bit. <laughs> You know how I get with all them special oh, I, effects. I, I know man. how you do. Yeah, I'm gonna go see it again. But yeah, no, I, remember, but I, I don't. I don't think I picked up because on that. there's a blood ritual where he you get the where he he can transfer to the you know body of the person that strikes him down. In this case, it's blood. But I got kind of the impression they were kind of implying that that was kind of his motivation in Jedi. Don, did am I off on that? I don't think you're off, but I think it's more than just. I, I, I think it takes more than just the the killing blow. Right. I think it also takes a, a an anger and hatred mindset mm-hmm. because he keep he kept bringing that up. Um, but yeah, there the ritual it seemed like in involved that hatred and anger. Uh, in order, it needed that in order to. Uh, complete that transition of all of the all of the memories of the sith and all of the life force of the sith to be transferred from the um master to the apprentice uh so that the apprentice would become the master and yeah Yeah. that explains a few things i don't remember i don't remember picking up on that for some reason (laughs) like i i think i was nodding out or something the old lady sitting beside me was more awake than me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because yeah we get this whole thing Oops. where rafe f- f- confronts him and he's like yeah strike me down let's do this give yourself to the dark side and you're right part of the sith ritual which kind of fitting for sith is you've got to hate your master so much you're going to ace him but oh yeah guess what when you ace him he becomes you and fuck you uh <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, which Ray plays him a little bit on this, which I I love this whole sequence. This Emperor thinks he's got the hand, and meanwhile we have Kylo Ren, who is now back to being Ben Solo, kind of being the awkward hero. <laughs> he, he makes a jump to a chain, uh, and comes down to try to rescue Ray and keep her from killing the Emperor because he realizes what's going on, and he meets up uh, with his old gang who, if there was any other group of badass people that got shortchanged, these guys got the Boba Fett treatment. The, the, <laughs> the, the, the Knights of Red. <laughs> these guys were just so there, I felt bad, because they wanted them to be so badass. And, uh, Andrew, do you remember this part where Kylo faces his, his former buddies, the, the, the Knights of Ren? Yeah, yeah, you heard more about like that when you what you expect from the Knights of Ren. You're like, those were your posse, man. Those guys. That was your. That was your inner circle, and shit. Well, because they did nothing throughout this film for the most part to be badass. They just mm-hmm. showed up, and then they yeah. everybody's like, "Oh, the Knights of Ren," and then 
you really didn't see him do anything. And you haven't since Last Jedi, since Hell, Force Awakens. There, there's Knights of Ren, they didn't even know what to do with them. And, well, because there's just so much in this film, you didn't have time. But, Don, yeah. Don were you a little disappointed, too, how they kind of built up supposed Knights of Ren and and then they did pretty much not a lot. I just took it. I just took it as that um, Kylo Ben uh, had just was just so much superior Better. to them that yeah. it, he kind of cut through them like butter because <laughs> that's he was just that much better. Right, but at the same time, we didn't really see the Knights of Ren in action in the last two films, though. Either I that's mean, that's true. You know, we don't we don't even have a really established that these guys do anything outside of being afraid. That's why I said they kind of get the Boba Fett treatment in many ways uh, with this to where they're badass characters, but we really don't see them too much in actual action. Um, At least, you know, in the original trilogy. Yes, we get to see uh, Mandalorians later and, of course, the Mandalorian series, but... But the sequence where he takes on the Knights of Ren and Rey is about to face the Emperor, she does this thing with the lightsaber where she passes the lightsaber to Ren. And I love this moment because, one, it's a gimmick taken from The Last Jedi, so, ha, we didn't retcon it. And two, Adam Driver, I've, lo- I've loved Adam Driver uh, in his post in other Star Wars things. I loved the one motion he did. Well, after he got the lightsaber, <laughs> did you catch it? Uh, the the little just comical, let's go, uh, type of hand gesture was I loved it because it was just slightly out of Star Wars character, but it still was really cool. <laughs> That's how the good Jedi acts, though. You know, it's yeah. got a little bit of swag to him. You do, <laughs> and and I liked that he got a little swag because he just did the little well, let's go. <laughs> and then, yeah, Don, you're right. He cuts through him like butter. And then, how cool is that shot of Ray and Kylo pulling up the lightsabers in front of the Emperor? I, ultimate shit, dude. That isn't that some ultimate Star Wars scene shit right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Don. I'm just thinking how to say it. Oh. Um. They they build it up so or the emperor builds it up and the story builds it up how important those two are together right. and they're building it up that they have that that force bond they have all this stuff and then what's ha- what happens next <laughs> right? she doesn't need him to kick the emperor's ass mm-hmm. yeah I appreciate the hell out of that no she didn't but. Just before we got to that part, what I loved was the fact of here we get this badass scene. They both have the lightsaber ready to go, and the Emperor's like, oh, okay, boom, and knocks the lightsabers out of their hands, drops them to their knees, and sucks their life force. It's just yep. like, it's just like, no, I'm the Emperor. It's like, f- screw you guys. I've been around for like, you know, many, many years. Uh, I'm not going to be taken down by that. And then we find out he can suck life force, which restores him and he does this generation thing and then he does this electrical storm because um the resistance has built up their forces and lando has uh gotten enough uh spaceships to help take out this fleet massive amount of spaceships but the emperor's like nah i'm gonna force electric electricity you guys and just this epic oh so much cool stuff happening in this third act um you know, because of we learned that sucking up the power, but that doesn't kill Kylo and Ray. And the fight that we got going on, this is all mirroring kind of Jedi, though. You've got the confronting of the Emperor, and you got the battle going on in space. Um, so that I I think was deliberate on purpose. But what did you think of all the the space battle stuff, Don? And uh, the fact they gave the Resistance, uh, you know. A little bit more attention, I will say, than maybe they gave the rebellion attention in Jedi in this, um, you know, with how they were trying to take down the planet ships while Rey was doing her thing with the Emperor. Um, well, definitely, can uh, definitely kind of parallel to Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the difference of being that while the um, battle between the Emperor and Ray was on was on the planet, mm-hmm. it, the rebels were fighting in space. Right. <laughs> um, but I mean, it it just also drove home the point that the Emperor really never learns. No. And you did the quote earlier with uh, the yeah. the you're, you you're, you're never going to win yeah. and no nor will your rebel friends. Right. They won't win either. Mm-hmm. And yet somehow every time he says that, guess who wins? The, the, Not the emperor. No. <laughs> uh, no, uh, not at all. And I, I just, I loved how they handled this sequence uh, a lot better than Re- Jedi. And yeah, you're right. It's the emperor's weakness. He not thinking he thinks these small forces are never a threat and they are, and that's his continuous flaw. And it happens here uh, with the resistance who at first can't take out the tower. And then they realize it's uh, the big capital ship that has the tower. And Andrew, uh, would you, did you like this sequence where they uh, kind of came up with an alternative form of transportation to speeders to do the attack on the spaceship? Yo, that was my favorite favorite i was so like when i saw that that was one of my favorite star wars moments ever they all they all run up on horses don't they in yeah. space yeah that was the shit yeah i remember that oh that was so good yeah because uh you have them go uh jam their speeders and they're like uh they're not using speeders which, if we're talking Jedi parallels, you do have a little bit of your nature versus technology with this scene of the horses uh, being unleashed by the uh, uh, Janna's group, led uh, you know with Finn accompanying them, as well they were as good. BB-8. Yeah, and they're kicking <laughs> ass on the surface of the ship too. Um, and I like that that they gave nearly everybody at least something to do this in battle except rose which is even watching it the second time rose was one of the only things i felt really bad about because they didn't do really anything with her no Uh, i hope they give her a a, like a series or you know i'm saying a solo movie or some type of thing or bring her into something because that wasn't cool she was such a one of my favorite things about um, these new movies. I just loved her, you know, that whole thing where she saves Finn, remember in Last Jedi? Yeah. Where she, you know, he's trying to kill himself and she crashes his ship and shit. I was like, man, that's good. You know, I mean, she was, that was a moment, like no white people involved. So good. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, because Finn's sacrifice in Last Jedi, that would have been futile. He wouldn't, wasn't going to end up. It action. wouldn't have done shit. It wouldn't have done yeah. shit. No. Oh. And she gets so shortchanged. Don, was that disappointing for you too a bit that they shortchanged her? I mean, didn't even give her really any moment. It it really was. It was disappointing. But they did that. It seems like they did that for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, they again. This is why I wished it would have been just a little longer because mm-hmm. they could have given a few more of these characters a proper send off. So, huh, I mean, even just a proper send off, right? Um, like, uh, in in oh god, dare I dare I even bring up this parallel? So in Game of Thrones. That's fine. Um, some of those bit characters in there in the mm-hmm. in in this finale, right. they were small characters, but they were prominent characters. Got the most awesome of send offs. Right. And spoiler, people die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some of the characters died after some of the characters, even though they were only about ten years old, died after being in a battle with a giant. Yes. And that was an awesome send off, and. Um, Rose, where she didn't die, she at least could have been given three minutes of of anything better than what they gave her. Yeah, I mean she she stayed in the background, unfortunately, um, and just popping up as frequent as the new characters and new actors we have out of nowhere. Uh, you know, which was great to see Dom Gleason. Don't don't get me wrong. 
Um, and, and, uh, you know, some of the other new characters, uh, not Tom Hill Gleason, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Pip, uh, <laughs> the Hobbit guy, uh, <laughs> Richard E. Grant. No, no, no. The, we'll talk to you in just a second. I know we're going a little oh, late. Oh, Dominic but... Monaghan. Thank you. God, fuck, I'm so horrible. God. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out who you were talking about when you said sorry, Pip. Sorry, not Pip. The other, uh, yeah, uh, but the Hobbit. Yeah. The, the Hobbit guy. Yeah, you know, he's in here. Um, a couple other characters, too. You know, familiar actor faces in here that are bit parts, and they almost get more attention than Rose. It's just like, yeah. it's like oh, come on, guys. You you could have done something, you know, given her uh, a repair something, you know, where she gets a moment to repair uh, the, the shuttle that won't take off or something, you know, something to give her some moment. But she mostly does, oh, I'm staying behind. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take off. Oh, and that's it. It's like, ah, you know, that, w- that was one of the only disappointing things was I would have liked to see a little bit more of Rose, though this is a daunting task for this film because... J.J. Abrams isn't just wrapping up a trilogy. He's wrapping up eight other films. So, like you said, Don, it would have been nice to see a little bit longer. Surprises me that it wasn't a bit longer because of the sheer volume of stuff you've got to try to wrap up in one movie. Um, And Rose, unfortunately, gets a little shortchanged, a lot shortchanged in this film. Uh, but Ray still gets to be a badass. Kylo gets to be a badass. Uh, we got our cameos, which kind of made sense, uh, you know, in this epic final battle where they're battling the, uh, Star Destroyers. And yeah, Ray gets her moment to where, uh, she does something that she tried to do in the first beginning of the film, and that's contact the other Jedi and have her there can be only one type of moment. <laughs> but she calls on the other Jedi, and this just final scene of how she takes out the Emperor. Ah, I love this whole sequence. She she gets, we find out Leia had a lightsaber, and she does that crossing of the lightsabers. That was so badass, wasn't it, Andrew? <laughs> yeah, man, it was so cool. It was, it was just gangster. I'm sorry, there's no other word for it. And and then, you know, uh, because the Emperor had tossed uh, Kylo down a shaft, but he comes back just after the Emperor gets dispatched, and Rey, uh, apparently her, her fighting the Emperor so much has, ex- you know, just drained her, and, and she apparently dies. And Kylo comes up, and he uh, does his thing of transferring, healing her, because she did it to him. And you know Kylo's not going to survive, because he can't. For the things he's done... It made sense that he passes, right? And this is where I I look at this going, if George Lucas was writing it, he would have had them live happily ever after together. Here's the thing with this whole this sequence right here, and I've alluded to it through the whole episode, and I know we're going a little late, I'm sorry, but uh, it's this one section. I did not like this kiss. I wish it hadn't happened. I'm like, because maybe I'm blind to it. Maybe, but for me, I never got a romantical thing. And apparently I saw an article somewhere where J.J. Abrams says that moment is supposed to be brother-sister. And I'm like, no, you don't kiss brother-sister like that. We get the kiss. And this it was the only thing that I hated because I loved how they wrote all these char- these both these characters throughout all three films, and then we get this kiss, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe I was blind. A- am I just blind, Dawn, that I didn't see the hints of them becoming romantically connected? Because I just ah, uh, it it the kiss just bugged me, and I, I it, they could have done it without it, I think. But I saw it more on his part than on her part. Right. But I mean, could you could we have done without it? Yeah, just a hug. I mean, Andrew, what? what but like do, I said, oh, I really think that had it been George Lucas writing, they would have gotten together. He would not have died. Yeah, they would have kissed. He would have. Yeah, 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 happily ever after. And and cue the the cheesy end music, um, <laughs> that he did to special edition 
Uh, I'm sorry, but that's about all that. That's about all the credit I give George Lucas. Yeah, Andrew, what did you think about this kiss that happened? I didn't. I didn't take it as a romantic kiss. No, like that didn't even cross my. Why would they? No, I, I didn't even see it as a romantic. You, you know, there's other types of, you know, reasons why somebody will kiss somebody. Oh no, right? I I know, but yeah, I, no, I I was like, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I mean, in in that moment, I would have done the same thing probably. It wasn't. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with, you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. there, you got a close up of two people, you know. That's what mm-hmm. just it's cinema. It's what you do. It doesn't have to be romance, you know. Yeah, and I guess I that's just the way I ended up taking that it was implied and i guess like i said maybe i'll watch no, it the guy even bugs time. bunny kisses people sometimes you yeah know i know saying? i just <laughs> <laughs> just the way i don't know uh, you know but then again um you know leia uh kissed luke a few times so uh i guess Oops, what <laughs> what i was huh? hoping you would say that before me but that was immediately <laughs> what i thought of <laughs> that's true so i uh, Okay, so I'm a I'm a dredge of society. I apologize. I took that as, uh, I guess I I don't know why. Maybe it was because I was emotional in the moment myself um, that I took that. But uh, Kylo gets some redemption, and uh, there's some other redemption going on too. He JJ, and and we'll wrap it up here. JJ does something with the Emperor by having him pull the strings. Is this him kind of? helping fill in any plot holes that have happened over the other eight films, Andrew, as a filmmaker, uh, d- did he kind of use the emperor as that saying, well, the emperor has been pulling strings for like, since star Wars or since the well, I mean, episode one, I should say. I, the, the whole thing with man with star Wars is that you got like a ultimate evil type of thing. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you know, you got the force and you got what's the Jedi, which is the good ones. And then you got this motherfucker what's the bad, mm-hmm. you know, and to be honest, there is no bigger evil he could have thought of that would have been bigger than him. Mm-hmm. You know, it just it don't exist. Right. You know, so to me, you know, I'm sitting here thinking like, all right, well, if these, you know, people, if assholes that don't like these movies want to see a perfect Star Wars movie, they could just watch a fan film. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want to see a perfect Star Wars movie. Just sure. watch them. Not saying nothing bad, but eh, come on, man. This is legacy we're talking about, mm-hmm. and I'm fucking around. These are professional people thinking about this stuff. I mean, it made all the sense in the world to me. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the ultimate evil. This whole shit. Who's gonna be scarier than him? Like, um, Darth Maul, or, or that, um, who, who was that other one that they had in there? Uh, the one with like eight arms or whatever. Oh that... yeah, Grievous, General Grievous. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. No, this is it, man. Try. You could try with them other ones, mm-hmm. but it all comes back to him for a reason. Right. You know. He's he's ultimate evil, and so, you know that to me. Tell me who it could be if not that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does, and I, I liked. I I didn't mind it. I'm just saying that he him having the emperor being able to live past a certain death, and and we realize he's been doing this all along and manipulating pretty much everyone in the galaxy. That's the mm-hmm. key players. It makes I thought, a lot of shit make sense. It makes it seem like there was a design to it. It, you know? it, it does. You know, at, on one hand, I could see where some people were frustrated where, oh, it's a cop up. But on the other hand, I'm like, in the context of Star Wars and, you know, seven year old me watching Empire, when it, this makes total sense. Don, yeah. Don, did you feel like this was a reasonable explanation for some of the things that maybe were head scratchers in the previous films? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And do you think it was. A, a good way to do it or did you feel kind of did it feel like an easy cheap way out but, can it be both <laughs> it can be it's star wars you're right you know yeah. th- th- it's for got plenty of it in its history right it, it's fantasy yeah. so yeah you're right so um yeah and i'm fine for it too so you know you use the emperor to help patch those holes in this whole saga and I will say he does help. J.J. Abrams also does have a moment in here for Chewie to get his medal finally <laughs> from A New Hope because he didn't get one in A New Hope. And so he, at the very end of this movie, he finally gets his medallion, which happens to be uh, Leia's. But still, he gets his reward, doesn't he, Don? Yes, he does. It, so good. It was. It was. It was so good. The audience cheered again. That's how you knew you were in an audience full of geeks because you're like, 
man, only people who who were familiar with the New Hope and the fact that Chewie didn't get the award, you know, the fact that happening just has so much meaning. And uh, yeah, Ray and Finn and Poe, they're all together. They're happy uh, trio, which I liked the fact that we have this happy trio where none of them are romantically involved in one another, which was good. Uh, you usually get a Hollywood trope. And we get Lando has a moment with Janna. Uh, Andrew, so is hey. it implied? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's a, the way they talk. Uh, yeah. No, it's great, man. You know, they, they're going to continue. What's great is the black people. Black characters talking to each other. Not only do they live through the movie, they talk to each other. It give me, it give me so much hope for the future of Star Wars. You know, now that we're out of like the white story, I like, I like where it was going. I, you know, I know about his health or whatever, but I'm ready to pick up with them. You know, yeah. that that what he, you know, what he proposes. Which I, I will say, I read an article somewhere, and apparently, yes, it is implied that that is supposedly his daughter. Great man, uh, which what a story! I was cool because I'm like, now I want to see Jana and Finn. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to see their adventures with the. I would have just been happy with more of their conversations. I mean, oh, that I was too. So, yeah. That just where they come from, you know, that to me just very interesting. And considering mm-hmm. it's got nothing to do with Jedi's, that's a big deal because I don't really care about anything that's not Jedi. <laughs> well, it was a Star Wars moment. I mean. Don, did you feel that that was that was like a tried and true Star Wars moment? There, did you did you like that where it's pretty much implied and then, like I said, verified afterwards, of course. But in the movie, within the context, it's implied that that's uh, uh, Lando's kid, kid, grandkid, yeah, yeah, it, it related some way. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he was a you know philanderer he <laughs> likes the ladies he well he liked a lot of things not just the ladies yeah, some of them aliens are his some kids the, too yeah. <laughs> uh, some of them robots he liked probably. the robots too he did like the oh robots. yeah oh, i love that so much <laughs> man and solo with that oh, i fuck. love that yeah, <laughs> yeah me too. that was so good which makes me really want that donald glover lando movie um yes it a couple of things and then of course we're gonna wrap it We'll wrap it up here, uh, Kyle, uh, Ray. We do get a final moment to where she actually visits the Luke homestead, which was cool. Not only that, but did you catch it? They even have it to where she does a thing that we saw her do at the very beginning of Force Awakens. She slides down a piece of metal down a sand dune. Mm-hmm. And she's smiling, and I'm like... Way to bookend this. I I like films that do bookends like this. And so we're bookending the whole saga by visiting the Luke Homestead and then her trilogy story as well, because here she is doing the same thing we first saw her do, which was slide down a sand dune on a metal piece of metal, visit the homestead, and then she buries the lightsabers because she's got her own badass lightsaber. And then, of course, she calls herself Skywalker, Andrew, how'd you feel about this little segment here with her? Uh, and it's great. How she be, calls herself a Skywalker and, and she's got, you know, an interesting lightsaber for sure. It was uh, good. It was no, it was none out of place. It's a way to wrap it up for me, man. I've been mm-hmm. looking at Star Wars since I was, you know, I was a kid. I was born in January 1977. Mm-hmm. And Star Wars, that first one was the only tape that I had through my childhood. That was the only tape I had. I looked at that movie so much, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I got it memorized, and so um, I got every single little thing they were dropping because I've seen Force Awakens a lot too. Yeah. So I picked up everything they were putting down, and I was yeah. like, I, even though you know where it's going, that's because your heart's going there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about like, you know, being bored or or being like not surprised. It's like, what the fuck? Just do yeah, the I, thing. Wrap it up. You know, they did it. They did very well. Don, how about you? Did you like this whole little sequence with just Ray and, and did it feel like a very uh, respectable bookend to the, not just the trilogy, but the saga? Uh, yes, it most certainly did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, and it, it didn't feel, the thing is, you're right, Andrew, it's predictable. You know where it's going and you want it to go there. <laughs> even, even though it may not, you know, it, it you know, it's, it's a bit cliche. You know where it's going. It You want it to go there. Cause you, 42 years, are you going to try to trip people up? Fuck that. 
Dude, you know, that's this, not cool. This was the first movie. Star Wars was the first movie I saw in the theater. Two and a half year old Mark. Very first movie I saw in the theater. And it uh, affected me ever since then. Uh, I saw every Star Wars film in the theater since. And I was glad I saw this one. Uh, I, I know we're going late, guys, but I, I just want, I hope you uh, 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 just uh, humor me for a little bit. We didn't mention two key bad guys in this film. One uh, was awesome, and one was even more awesome. <laughs> first, uh, General Hux is still around in the Empire, in the First Order, uh, even though of his failure. He's still a soldier. He's still an officer. Uh, but what did you think, Dot, of, of Hux being the spy? It didn't surprise me. I was expecting it. Uh-huh. Because his... his uh rivalry with Kylo Ren was far too intense to mm-hmm. go without him making a major mistake. Right. And Andrew, what about you with Hux? Did you like where they took this character and making him the spy and not so much hate, helping the resistance, but want Kylo to fail? Yeah. It's so funny, man. The whole thing of them is hilarious. I think Hux is funny. I like Donald Gleason anyways. <laughs> yeah, I even like Peter Rabbit, but like, <laughs> Um, for for I love what I like even mo- more though is Poe's reaction when he finds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was great. Here, that shoot, was so good. Shoot, shoot me in the arm. That way they don't. Poof. Oh, you shot me in the leg. <laughs> he just shoots him in the leg. <laughs> so good, but, man. No, I liked. I like that. I liked mm-hmm. him. And the other villain I need to mention because he was so cool to see on screen, and it was so cool to see him in a role where he wasn't acting goofy, though I do love Hudson Hawk, getting to see Richard E. Grant. I'm going to say it right now. This will be a bold statement, and you guys can say I'm full of shit, which I probably am. General Pride is the coolest officer since Tarkin. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nah, Absolutely, I'm with that. yeah. I'm with that. I loved this character. He wasn't done with humor. He was a badass officer, and I loved Richard E. Grant in this role. Uh, Don, you're a Hudson Hawk fan. Did you like Richard E. Grant in this in a serious role to where he's a badass? I like him. I, I'm just a Richard E. Grant fan. I like mm-hmm. I like his his style. Um, but yeah, it's I liked it because it reminded me of. The officers in um, the early Star Wars movies. Right. You you didn't you didn't make mistakes. You weren't petty. If you screwed up, you were executed. Yeah. Period. And and H- he he helps an- eliminate Hux in the most unceremonious way. <laughs> yeah. It was just great. Uh, Andrew, you're familiar with Richard E. Grant. Did you like him in a serious role like this? I did, man. You got yeah, this is gonna make y'all laugh. What I know him for best is um Spice World. Oh I've yeah. Seen Spice World way more times than anybody will probably guess that I did. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I dug I love the way he kills Hux is so like just <laughs> <laughs> well, tell, tell the Emperor I found his spy. That's right. Well, what was the death of a spy? I mean, that's how it goes. Well what was great about it is because Hux has played such a villain in the first two films in the first order to just have him unceremoniously just get killed was was actually a great thing i loved that because uh, i loved the general pride character I, this was a character i was like this is cool you're right don this is this guy felt like the old school officers from the original trilogy mm-hmm. the the, the good choice and uh, yeah yeah he was a good choice as well so in the end um I don't understand quite the hate. Uh, While I did rate it, yes, I did rate it probably the lowest out of the last three films. I still gave it four out of five. I still think it's a solid film. I think it's a massive undertaking for J.J. Abrams to try to wrap up not just the trilogy, but the full saga. And William's still doing the score, and you can absolutely tell that Ray is his favorite because Ray's music is the best theme uh, that he's done recently. But... I was I was very happy with the way it finished, and I I, I felt satisfied. Uh, Don, did you feel satisfied as the credits rolled? Yes, very much so. I was. 
I'm very thankful that we got the stories. I'm very thankful that the stories were. I I don't see a problem with any of the stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, anybody who bitches about it, okay, go write a better story. Go write <laughs> a better original story. Yeah. And then come back and and tell us what the rest of the world thinks of your story because I guarantee it's not going to be this good. Yeah. Agreed. Andrew, did you feel satisfied with the credits rolling? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to see a Star Wars movie that's made for the the cynics, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see a Star Wars movie that's made for fan. I want to see a, a, a movie that that's going to be like that's going to hold up long after everybody that's in it's dead and everybody that's made is dead and definitely the fans are all dead, you know. Um, they still got to be great. They got to mm-hmm. be, you know, some some kid throw them all on and just watch them all. You know, that's what they they need to do. They need to connect. They mm-hmm. need, you know, they, that's that was my problem with them prequels. They don't match. You know, right. they seem like they were a whole other type of movie. And I'm like, it doesn't seem like Star Wars to me. You know, um, so I, that's why I dig them so much. These, but I'm like you, man. I would put it at the third. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as them's concerned, to me, um, Last Jedi is the best. Then Force Awakens. Then this, but right. like. You know, as far as like the hate or whatever, I'll say this, man, and you know how I am about all that online stuff <laughs> or whatever. That's not the real like you go out in the real world, it's 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 way different. The fans yeah. way different. I would say if you got a problem with these movies, you probably don't you probably don't deserve a better one than what they are making for you. You probably don't. Um I I did when Harrison Ford showed up, the old lady beside me gasped. And what was crazy about that yeah. is when he dies at Force Awakens, the people beside me all gasped. Yeah. So for them to gasp when he comes back, that was neat. Um, but I did. I so I just ran my ass out of the theater after I saw it. I don't want to hear any bullshit. Yeah. Let me. Nobody's gonna let you just like anything anymore, mm-hmm. you know. And so these movies, I think, are way better than I hate to say it, but a large contingent of that fandom deserves. <laughs> and I'm so glad that they're not trying yeah. to play to them like completely. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and I totally agree. Uh, it was better the second time around. I'm going to say it right now. It's second time around because the inner voice and all the buildup and the things that I had seen run across my news feed beforehand kind of unfortunately pulled in. But still, I, I still gave it four out of five, which I think it, it needs to be seen on the big screen for sure. When I saw it the second time, I enjoyed it even more because I caught more things. And in my review, I said it, and I'll stand by it now. For the for the critics out there who are panning the shit out of it, didn't like it, they loved The Last Jedi, I loved The Last Jedi, I loved all three of these films, all these Star Wars films, fuck it, even the prequels, even though I think Phantom Menace is a waste, uh, I still enjoy watching them, I'll watch any of them at any time. Um, with this one, yes, by itself, compared to like The Last Jedi, one of the things I like about it is like it's a contained story, this one, no it isn't. But if you look at Sky, The Rise of Skywalker within the context of the nine films, this film is how just about as good as you could probably do trying to wrap up such a long series. And, and you know, maybe within the trilogy or a movie by itself, the critics are critical about it. But if you look at it from the context of spanning eight films, including this one, nine films... This is a this is the best they could this is a solid story because all the stories that they touch on in here are things that they touched on in the past that they're trying to wrap up they're trying to tie up come to a conclusion so by itself you may be taken aback a bit but if you go for all eight films if you marathon these I guarantee you you look at Rise of Skywalker differently than maybe just coming in and looking at Rise of Skywalker as its own film um, because it's it's not its own film, but it doesn't need to be its own film. The, the whole purpose of this is to wrap up this saga, and I think they did a f- very good job in the long run. You know, it, it's one that I definitely watch again. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a Ray fan. I'll watch her, her character in anything. But yeah. but uh, you know, uh, so your final thought, Andrew, with with the Rise of Skywalker. Do you? Uh, at the very end of the day, uh, Rise of Skywalker as a movie, how do you feel about it? And, and what would you tell people out there who maybe are leery because of the boisterous, this is hot trash? Oh, I could tell you exactly that because I had to tell somebody at a Christmas party the other night. It was a teenage son of uh, one of my best friends. 
hadn't gone to see it yet, even though he was a Star Wars fan, because he didn't like the last one, and he heard all the bad reviews. I'm like, look, man, it's basically a sequel to The Force Awakens. You're fine if you like that movie. Mm -hmm. But I will say to other people, like, it had, like Don said, man, it had so much that it had to do. It was like a Herculean effort, man, Mm -hmm. to make this movie, to come up with it. And so, you know, step out of your bullshit for a second. It was like, this was a hard movie to make, you know? I was exhausted by the end of it because (laughs) of how much is in it, you know? I'm like, God damn. I mean, you're right. I could have used some more, but I don't think I could have took no more. Honestly, Mm -hmm. it's just, it's a very, um, God, yeah, I don't know what's the right word for it. It just... I mean, Don is right. It was it was just a lot. It was mm-hmm. a weight, you know? Yeah. Don, how about you? Final thought with this, and what would you tell people who might be leery? Um, I don't know. I guess uh, it's not a perfect film, but it's... It, it's a... It's an appropriate film. This is <laughs> This is the film... Well, it is. It's mm-hmm. it's a very it has it's Okay. Um again with a comparison. Um mm-hmm. thinking of how uh, Avengers Endgame wraps up so much going on there. Um I like this one better. Mhm. Oh yeah. Oh it's, god. It's, yeah. it's not it's not overwhelming, but it still touches on most it it touches on the most important things. Yeah. Uh, it, without without killing its audience <laughs> you, you're right and i have a feeling in all honesty i'm glad you brought up endgame because i have a feeling maybe critics and, and some people who are hating on it would take this differently had they crammed the nine other films into a 10-year period to where it's more fresh in your mind they might take rise of skywalker differently uh, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I think Rise of Skywalker does it better than Endgame. Um, it, 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 yeah, I was happy with it, and second viewing especially, I, I enjoyed it even more uh, <laughs> because you you you're over all the unexpected things. You know kind of what to expect, and then you can pay attention to more of what's going on. And yeah, so there you have it, folks. We all would recommend it. Don't listen to the loud boisterous. If you're a Star Wars fan at all, if you enjoy the original trilogy, if you enjoy, just just see this because appreciate the fact 42 years later, you are able to see a new Star Wars film in the theater, big screen, popcorn and all. Okay? Not many franchises, especially sci-fi franchises, can have you do that. And I think that's what you also have to appreciate is the fact of here we have a movie that has covered a franchise that's run so long, become so much a part of our culture. Just enjoy the fact that it exists, if nothing else. <laughs> you know, and I, I think people lose that perspective sometimes. Uh, I know I have they to... can't enjoy anything. That's not Star Wars' fault. That's you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So hey, Star Wars. <laughs> so I want to thank Don and Andrew, both of you, so much for going this long and, and talking this. Uh, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, as you can tell, and, and I just, I was very satisfied with this film. Yes, I know I gave it four out of five, but that's still a high rating, folks. And, and uh, overall, yeah, I was satisfied as a fan. So there you have it, folks. Thank you so much for sticking with us on this longer episode tonight. Now this is the part where I give my crew, my wonderful patient crew, a chance to shill whatever they like. So license to shill. Go ahead, Don. Uh, please, shill away. All right. So sometimes you can find me at intheaudience.net. Not so good at keeping up with it. Um, but also, you know, I'm going to mention it. Please do. Uh, Oh, submissions are open for the Northeast Wisconsin, the new horror film fest at the historic Time Theater in downtown Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Support your local indie filmmaker, hashtag. Yes. Speaking of indie filmmaker, Andrew Shearer, please shill away, sir. Oh, thanks, man. I had a delightful time talking to y'all. Y'all helped me understand this movie 
more, but mostly help me understand film more. And I just, I, it's my favorite people to talk about movies with. So thank you for having me. And yes, I do make movies here in Athens, Georgia with my friends. We are called Gonzorific, G-O-N-Z-O-R-F-F-I-C. Uh, you can go to our website, gonzorific.com, and pick up your copy of Bad Girl Dracula. Please do. It'll really help us make more crazy shit. <laughs> Such an awesome title. Uh, I got to get my copy yet. Um, yeah, uh, check out his stuff. Gonzorific is awesome. Uh, Dawn is awesome. I am very fortunate to have such a cool crew of people to talk to uh, and put up with my ramblings. Uh, so I thank you all. I hope you all have a good holiday. Please keep an eye to the podcast. I've got a lot of episodes I'm actually editing. We've got this one. Andrew was uh, helped me finish out our Cronenberg series with our discussion on Cosmopolis. That will be this week. Uh, I'm going to have a special little Christmas gift. It probably won't be done by Christmas, but for the week, uh, for all of you listeners out there. And, yeah, we got a lot of great stuff coming in 2020 because the temperature is getting risen to 52 degrees KB. Uh, so keep an eye out for what's coming with that. And thank you so much. And I will just say, may the force be with you. May the Schwartz be with you. May the Schwartz be with you. May the Schwartz be with you. Adorable. Adorable. Hey, all my friends out there looking for more Spoiler Room goodness? Then why don't you check out our brand new Patreon page, patreon.com slash specialmarkproductions, where you can get access to exclusive Spoiler Room episodes and a whole lot more. You can also find us on Facebook groups at SMPRD and on to Twitter at Special Mark Pro. Let your voice be heard and let us know what you would like to see in the Spoiler Room, as well as just how we're doing in general. We appreciate your support, and remember in the Spoiler Room, the conversation is fresh, but we do spoil the movies.